Get up over his shoes. Oh, wow. You can believe that. Oh, that is just outrageous. You pulled it back. It can't be done. I can't. It can't be done. We all learned that lies are important when we first start playing golf, but then the search for the perfect swing takes over. Load the inside of the back. Shoulder turn. Load the inside of the back. Weight shift. the inside of the back. Weight shift. And then eventually we start categorizing lies only as good or bad. But understanding the nuances of lies can make a huge difference in being able to hit more greens and have more makeable putts. So in this quick video, we'll talk about grass lies in a little bit more detail and how we can adjust shot and club selection accordingly. Hi everyone, I'm Manu, a full-time, I mean, part-time golfer with a full-time desk job. I wish it was the other way around. Welcome, if it's your first time here, I hope you find this helpful. Okay, to keep things manageable today, we're only gonna talk about common grass lies. There are four types, fairway, first cut, rough, and heavy rough. Now, obviously the thing that differentiates these is grass, specifically how much grass is between the club and the ball, and how much grass there is between the ball and the air that we wanna launch the ball into. This grass affects three things, spin, distance, and direction. On spin, if you get grass trapped between the club face and the ball, the grooves of the club can't make good enough contact with the ball to create normal backspin. On distance, if grass gets in the way as the club moves through the shot, both club and ball speed are impacted, so you end up losing distance. Kind of like how your car slows down if you're driving at speed and you hit a large puddle. There's also a chance that you end up getting significantly more distance if you end up hitting a flyer lie in the rough, but they're super unpredictable, so we're not gonna cover that today. And finally, direction. If there's a lot of thick grass that you have to move the club through, it can end up rotating your club face open or closed, so you end up hitting the ball not squarely. I think examples are the best way to learn, so let's put these into a real life example. So this here is the first hole at Spyglass Hill Golf Course. It is a leisurely, nice, easy 600 yard par five. So let's assume we've hit two great shots and now we're sitting 120 yards from a back pin and the green's actually fairly receptive. So a good wedge in, land perfectly and be right next to the hole. So let's take a look at this 120 yard shot from a bunch of different lies. First, the fairway lie. This one's fairly straightforward. We love fairway lies. We're gonna make clean contact with the ball, which means we're gonna get the expected amount of backspin and the expected amount of rollout. For this, from 120 yards, we're expecting not very much rollout because it's a wedge. So we're gonna land it close to the flag and probably stop there, maybe get a little bit of backspin. There's also not gonna be any grass in the way of hitting the ball. So we're gonna get normal distance and no grass in the way means no deflection of the ball left or right. So the direction is gonna be good too. For me, for this 120 yard shot, I'd hit like a 90% pitching wedge. My full pitching wedge goes somewhere between 125 to 130 yards, depending on how much I'm benching that week. But yeah, for this, it'd be about a 90% pitching wedge. I'd expect the ball to land and stop pretty pretty close to there because it, the greens are fairly receptive. Now, what happens if we're hitting from the first cut? I'm still gonna make pretty good clean contact, mostly. There might be a few blades of grass here and there, but because of that, we're gonna probably see a tiny shift to our backspin. So we might get the right amount of backspin as we normally expect from the fairway. We might get a little bit less. That means we might get a little bit more rollout. So while it's close, we wanna have a little bit more of a margin for error. The same thing applies to the distance. We're probably gonna get a tiny bit of a deflection in distance. It's not a ton, but you might wanna increase your margin for error by a little bit. No real direction changes because we're not expecting a bunch of grass to get in the way of us hitting the ball. And so for me, for this shot, I'd still hit my same 90% pitching wedge, 120 yards, but I, instead of aiming it at the flag and expecting it to land and stop there, I'd plan for a little bit more rollout. So aim it maybe two to five yards just short of the flag and expecting a little bit more of like a bounce and, and forward roll. Now, if we're in the shot from the rough, things are gonna be a little bit rougher because we're not gonna make clean contact with the ball. And that means much less backspin than we expect from a normal shot from the fairway, which leads to more rollout than we would normally expect to. And it also means that with the grass getting in between the club face and the ball, now you're gonna have a little bit less distance. So that's something to think about. Usually from like the light rough, there shouldn't be too much of a deflection in terms of direction, but still makes sense to hold the club a little bit tighter and make sure that the club face angle is maintained as you hit through the ball. For me, for the shot, instead of hitting a full pitching wedge, I'd probably prefer to hit uh, say like an 80% nine iron, which would normally fly about 130 yards. But in this case, because the rough, it's probably not gonna fly as far. And also instead of aiming at the flag, I'm gonna aim five to 10 yards short to allow for that extra rollout because there's no backspin, right? So ball lands, maybe say center of the green-ish and then rolls out towards the flag. Or you wanna get extra conservative, maybe land it in the front third of the green. And now let's assume we're in the deep rough because maybe that second shot didn't go as well as we planned. But we're not worried because we watched this dope video on how to assess different lies. So anyway, so we're in the deep rough and now you're not gonna get clean contact on the ball at all, which means very little spin and a lot more rollout than we normally would get. It also means there's gonna be a ton of grass between the club face and the ball, slowing all this thing down. And so we're gonna get much less distance than we normally expect. And this time, because there's so much grass, the direction's also gonna be impacted. And so we're gonna have to hold the club significantly tighter to make sure we maintain that face angle through the shot. Now for me, I'd probably hit an eight iron here versus a nine iron out of the basic rough because there's gonna be a ton of grass in the way of that club. And I wanna make sure the ball gets on the green. The second part of this is there's gonna be a lot of rollout. And so instead of aiming close to the flag, I'm give it maybe like up to 20 yards of space to roll out, depending on what the grass of the rough looks like. Goal root here really is just to get the ball on the green 
and stay there so we have two putts and maybe we can make par. From a takeaway perspective, here are the two biggest points I like to remember when it comes to lies. Number one, the rougher the lie, the more roll I have to account for. So I think about that when I'm thinking about where I want to land the ball on the green. And two, with thicker lies, I usually club up a little bit to absolutely guarantee I can cover whatever distance I need to cover and I'm not going to end up short siding myself. Next, check out this video on how to pick precise targets now that you know how the ball is going to perform out of any lie. And thanks for watching. See you on the other side.